Hey guys, Jared back again. So I was thinking to myself the other day, you know what, a lot of people make really fantastic reviews and they're quite in depth um, in explaining what the capabilities and limitations of the devices are. But you know, and even though they do go through the settings, I need to show you some of the settings. They don't, I've never seen a video, personally I've never seen a video, although I'm sure they exist, that actually go in depth on the settings menu because the settings menu is really what it's all about. The home screen's fancy and everything like that, but the settings menu is where the meat of the device is. It's kind of like flashing a new ROM and the first thing all of us do, at least those of us that are rude and are into flashing ROMs, the first thing we do is jump into the settings menu and start checking out all, all the different um, customization options. And and this is, well, a Samsung ROM. So obviously it's gonna have a lot of customization options. Now, uh, Samsung Galaxy devices, um, since the S3 with a certain uh, software update, have been um, categorized. Uh, you've got connections, device controls, and general, of course it varies depending on the device you have. Nevertheless, uh, connections is pretty standard all across the board with all Android devices. Of course, you're gonna have Wi-Fi, flight mode, Bluetooth, tethering, and so on and so forth. Um, but where I want, so I'm gonna skip that, and we're gonna go ahead and start with device. Now the first thing, I wanted to start out with on the settings menu uh, with the Note 3 specifically uh, is this little search dialog box here. So if we click on it and I wanted to type in, I don't know, S Pen, it'll start bringing up different settings related to the S Pen. So um, instead of going through and skimming, you know, if you have an idea of what you're looking for, go ahead and type it in the search box instead of, um, you know, scrolling through all the different settings and functions uh, until you finally find what it is you're looking for. Um, that said, we're going to go ahead and continue on and we'll start with sound. Now, a lot of these things I'm probably going to skip through such as volume, vibration, the different ringtones and so on because I mean this video will just carry on and on and on and those are kind of um, you know mundane things to talk about. Um, obviously the first thing I do when I get a Galaxy device is disable the dial pad tone, the touch sounds and of course the screen lock sound because Samsung just seems to assume that everybody wants to hear their bloody phone make a rippling effect every single friggin time you unlock your phone uh, which is really annoying. Uh, something specific to the Galaxy S3 of, or Galaxy Note 3, Galaxy S3, wow we're dating ourselves a little bit here. Uh, pen attach detach sound um, we've got uh, key tap sounds and of course key tap vibration I don't like the tap sounds uh, of course HDMI so go ahead and hook it up to your TV and if it's got um, obviously if, if it's just the TV itself playing through the TV sound stereo uh, if you do have a surround sound system go ahead and tap on surround sound and of course we have adapt sound but this has been with Galaxy devices for a little while now so you can just uh, um, have it record some small pieces of your environment and uh, based on that it'll alter some sounds and things like that I've never really played around with it too much nor do I care to uh, we'll go ahead and jump on down to display now. Brightness, screen timeout, all that regular stuff. Um, screen mode, this is something specific to Galaxy devices, although I do think so, uh, some other devices out there have something similar to it. This is Galaxy's take on it. So, of course, you can just adjust um, the tones of your screen here. I personally prefer dynamic just because I feel like it kind of lives truer to a Super AMOLED with really bright, vibrant um, electric colors. Uh, so I just go ahead and keep it on there. Uh, reading mode, um, so this is something that will optimize the color of the display um, so that it's easier to read, though at the moment the only applications that I have installed uh, that's compatible with this is Playbooks, go figure. But it's there, and I know that there's some of you out there that are going to be reading uh, on your Note 3 considering it is such a big device. Uh, adjust screen tone, so um, save power by adjusting screen tone. I actually don't like that, I don't really care because I'm always near a charger, so go ahead and drain my battery as long as it makes my display look the best, right? Uh, display battery percentage, that's something that's since the S3, which is always really handy. That's something that a lot of different um, phone manufacturers are starting to adopt these days. Uh, and of course, edit after screen capture once you take a screen capture. Uh, Multi-window support, um, that's something that's specific to Galaxy devices. Uh, that's basically, you know, if you go ahead and long press the back button, you come up with these. Unfortunately, these are all Samsung chosen um, devices, pre-installed, or devices, pre-installed applications uh, that they deem compatible with this multi-window support. So basically, if you guys aren't familiar with it, one application is running in the top portion of the screen and another application is running in the bottom portion of the screen. Though, if you're rooted and you want to modify it, uh, you can basically, there's a, there's a modification where you can choose um, any user downloaded application which is really really nice um, I'm not sure why Samsung decided they they get to pick what uh, applications you get to choose which are multi-window LED indicator lock screen wallpapers uh, fonts pretty actually standard um, it would be nice to see Samsung kind of like adding some more fonts it's not the end of the world I mean something really silly to complain about but I mean we've been seeing these fonts since the beginning of time with Samsung so uh, it'd be nice if they kind of spruce it up a little bit uh, notification panel so uh, you can change uh, brightness adjustments, set the quick settings, buttons, and so on. So that's basically when we pull down this, that's what you get there. 
so that's something different that you can play around with in there and edit. Um, easy mode, of course, you know, if you wanted to, you can, you know, you're giving this phone to somebody that's not quite familiar with smartphones and the complexity of Android devices, um, though it's really not complicated as far as you and I are concerned. Um, this is something, a great option for them, you know. Um, I think it's really good that actually... Um, phone manufacturer, specifically Samsung, has started to add that in there. Uh, accessibility calls, so lots of different options in here. You can change and modify how you answer and reject phone calls and, you know, ringtones and all that basic stuff, as you would imagine. Of course, blocking mode to further help you filtering out certain unwanted callers. Uh, moving on to controls here, we've got language and input. Um, oddly enough, when I click on language, these are the languages that are showing right now. Really strange. But if I was to go down to, let's say, for instance, the handwriting recognition, um, of course, English is the only one selected. But if I click on more languages, um, you'll notice that we can actually download all these other languages, um, which I'm assuming would a also add to, I'm going to assume, I haven't tried it yet, I'm assuming you would add to uh, the overall language list as well if we went ahead and did that. Um, voice control. Uh, all kinds of different options for you to, if you like controlling your device with your voice and, you know, the options there for you. <laughs> um, Hands-free modes for obviously when you're in the vehicle. Uh, of course, a bunch of different S Pen settings here, so you can disable pen detection. Basically, um, you know, well, the descriptions right there, disabling pen detection when the pen is attached can extend battery life. Um, I would probably keep that off, and in fact, ow, I just hit my head on the tripod. Um, I would actually enable that. Um, reason being, this particular op option there, let's say, for instance, you're sitting at a coffee shop, and you take out your S Pen, you're using it, you put it down, you grab your phone, you're done with your meeting, you leave, and your S Pen's still there. Although it's not the end of the world, and they don't cost an arm and a leg, it's still out-of-pocket cash that could be avoided. This will actually let you know, uh, with an audible noise, that, um, hey, man, you just walked away from your S Pen, and you should probably go and grab it so that you don't lose with it and you have a big gaping hole at the bottom of your phone. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that clicked on. Um, pointer shows the pointer when you hover the S Pen over the screen. Um, that's basically, you guys can see that little dot that when people are hovering it over the screen, uh, which is useful so you know exactly where it's pointing to, of course. Uh, direct pen input, display the handwriting pad on the text input area when the S Pen is detected. Uh, pen attachment, or sorry, detachment options. So we'll go ahead and jump in there. Um, action memo. So when you pull it out, is it going to pull out your action, like a memo right away first? Or your error command. I prefer the error command. Um, direct pen, or no, we were moving on from there. Uh, pen attach detach sounds. So, yeah, just basic stuff there. Nothing, I don't even know if you guys could hear that. <laughs> uh, one handed operation. This is something fantastic that Samsung, I believe Samsung's one of the first ones to introduce this to devices. Devices screens are getting bigger. You know, we've even got the LG G2, which is now a 5.2 inch display. Even the S4 at five inches uh, is a little bit, for, uh, a little bit big for a lot of people. Now the S, uh, the Note 3 here, my hands are pretty average size. I mean, they look big on camera, but seriously, like, I mean, they're, they're really average size. And, um, you know, the Note 3 is really big for me. I, I, you know, there's a lot of instances where I actually have to double hand it so I can actually reach across to, uh, to, to make certain selections. Um, and this is where this comes in. So uh, if we wanted to, let's go ahead and just demonstrate it on the calculator here. So I'll go back out of there, jump into the applications and hit on calculator. And you'll notice that now the calculator and the, the number pad has actually been pushed over to the right hand side. And if I wanted to, I can go ahead and push it over to the left hand side depending on which hand you uh, left-handed or right-handed you are. Um, so I thought that was a really great option. Now, of course, you can do it on specific things, though um, I do wish that maybe some more options were put in there. I don't know what for specifically, but you know, I'm sure that we could find some other uses for that one-handed operation uh, setting there. Uh, air gestures, lots of great stuff in here. And this is really, from this point on, motion control and on is kind of really where um, the Galaxy devices, the magic, the bells and whistles are located. So moving into air gesture here, um, we can get a bit of an idea of what we do with things. So we can click on that. We can try it. So we'll wait for this to do its thing. Put your device on a flat surface. Uh, once the screen is turned off, move your hand above the sensor. And I'm assuming the screen's turned off now. So if we want to check notifications or emails or things like that that are incoming, go ahead and swipe your hand across and it turns on like that. Um, I actually have it disabled because in my experiences, if it's on the table and I'm reaching across for certain things, it always ends up turning it on and it just drives me nuts. So um, I turn that off just so it doesn't get turned on um, by you know accident and actually start wasting battery, though I'm not, I'm sure not too much battery. Uh, air jump, so they don't actually have a little demonstration, try it for us, but uh, scroll the body being email messages by moving your hand up or down above the sensor. This feature is supported by email. 
that's it. <laughs> so, wow, right? Um, air jump, this is kind of an interesting thing. Scroll the body of email messages by moving your hand upward or downward. Oh, wait, did I just click on that? I think I just clicked on that one. Good Lord. Uh, air browse, I did click on that. This is one we've got a little try for. I love the demos that they provide to us so that we can actually figure out whether we want to use it or not. Uh, they demonstrated this feature um, at the, what was it? Was it the Galaxy S4? Yeah, the Galaxy S4 event. Um, it's a cool feature in theory. But the problem is the the way they were marketing this was if your hands are dirty, you're going to go ahead and use this feature so you can show people things. But you still have to grab your device, turn it on, um, swipe to unlock the screen if you have a screen, you know, a, a lock screen, um, and then, you know, select the gallery application and so on. I mean, either way, you're touching the device, you're touching the display. So it, to me, it kind of makes this silly, though it is a cool party parlor trick. Uh, so we'll back out of there. And um, let's go into Air Browse here. Go ahead and try that. Oh, shoot. I'm just redoing things. Um, okay, so let's move on to Air Call Accept. So if you're receiving a phone call, let's see here. And then if you're receiving a phone call, go ahead and that should have. Oh, several times. Okay, so that's how that works. It's kind of cool. The only thing I the problem I see with this is um, if there's somebody calling you and you don't want to answer the phone uh, and you accidentally, you know, as you're going to press no or something like that and you accidentally swipe your hand across, it's going to answer the phone call and then you're screwed. Um, so we're out of there now and let's go ahead and move on to, have we jumped into air view yet? Uh, no, we haven't. So air view mode, pen finger, auto, uh, air view pen options tons of options in here holy smokes um i'm not going to go through all of them but um progress preview speed dial preview uh basically just hovering your pen over certain things on your device will sort of expand upon it gives you a little description of exactly what it is you're pointing at which you know i think is cool but for the most part i'm pretty aware of what's going on but for maybe the the less tech savvy that are just getting into android and a note 3 um, that might be a good option for them uh air view i know we were just there my bad uh air command when you press the pen button while hovering your pen over the screen, the air command feature will appear. Hover your S Pen over any part in the screen, or sorry, on the screen, and press the pen button to access five useful pen features. Um, so basically, pulling that out, and that happens. If it goes away and you want it to happen again, hover it over, press the button, and that pops up. Really useful, and that's the way I'm going to keep it. Um, I like it like that, though I don't use the S Pen all that often. Um, I still think it's a neat feature, nevertheless. Uh, motions. Uh, so we've got direct call, smart alert, uh, zoom, browse an image, or mute and pause. So, I mean, direct call, you know, basically if you're in a, your contacts list or in a text message, you can go ahead and um, hold the phone up to your head and it'll uh, call it for you, uh, call that number for you, smart alert. Um, so whenever you, if you have it on vibrate or something like that and somebody uh, calls you, if you go ahead and pick up your phone, it'll give you a little vibration, letting you know that there's uh, messages waiting for you just in case you weren't intending on checking your phone. Um, zoom, you know, tilt to zoom. So basically if you have your fingers pressed on the display and you kind of tilt it back and forth, it's going to zoom in and out for you. And of course, mute and pause. Um, so you can just go ahead and hold your hand over it. If, uh, if you're playing music or a video or something like that, it'll pause and or mute it, you know, calls, videos, music, and so on. That's uh, some cool options in there. Um, palm motion. So capture screen by, you know, sliding your, uh, the bottom of your palm, uh, left or right on the display. Uh, mute and pause, kind of the same thing. Um, smart screen. Uh, so we've got smart stay. So basically as long as the, uh, front facing camera can detect that your eyes are at, in fact still looking at the display, um, it will keep the display on instead of timing it out and turning the display off. This option, although extremely cool and useful is really hit or miss. And if any of you guys own a galaxy device, you guys know what I'm talking about. Usually I have it turned off, but, um, I've been trying to test it out on the galaxy Note 3 to see if they've made any improvements. Um, I don't think they have a uh, smart rotation, same thing, depending on the orientation of your face, it'll orientate, uh, It'll change the orientation of, uh, of the display. Uh, smart pause. So if you're watching a video and you look away because someone's talking to you, it'll actually pause the video. Again, that's the same thing as smart stay. It all depends on the front facing camera, the lighting situation and so on and so forth. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, in a perfect situation, of course, it works really quite well. And of course, smart scroll as well. Uh, smart scroll, they market it as, oh, it detects your eyes if you want to, you know, scroll up the, a web page or down the web page. Really, it's more a matter of you're actually friggin' tilt or uh, moving your head up and down, um, which is really silly looking in my opinion. So that's a feature you'll never catch me dead using. 
Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So we've got smart screen, and of course you've got uh, increased touch sensitivity. So this is something we're moving into the winter months. You're going to be wearing gloves. You know, it's going to be hard. A lot of these displays, they don't pick up on your finger swipes um, when you want to use your device. So you have to kind of like pull out your thumb from the glove to actually use your device, and that's a big pain in the ass. But this actually, this display, even with that turned off, actually works really, really well. So I mean, if I can even show you from the lock screen here what I mean by that. So with that option still turned off, I can still unlock it. And I just wrapped the uh, microfiber cloth twice. So it, it goes to show the displays are, you know, technology is increasing. So, but you know, if you find that you do need to use it, hey man, it's there for you. Uh, moving into general now, of course, we've got accounts. We've got some cloud because, you know, Samsung's partnered with uh, um, Dropbox. Uh, back and reset, date and time, accessory. Really nothing too much in here. Some docs and uh, settings and SV window colors, things like that. So, ooh, wait a minute. Oh, cool. I didn't know that this had that. I got to get myself an S View uh, case for this phone now. <laughs> it's decided. Um, and automatic unlocks, select info, show and on cover. So that's kind of cool. Um, back out of there. And uh, application manager. If you guys are interested in seeing what this looks like, that's what it looks like. Um, I don't know how many applications are running right now. So I've got a few applications running right now. And... Um, Oh, also, um, I hardly have any applications. I think I've got like three user downloaded applications right now. Um, and I still got 24 gigabytes free. Uh, and of course the system takes up some of it. Uh, moving on to SD card. I don't have an SD card in here because 32 gigs is actually enough for me. Uh, go over to running and if this will load, come on, three gigs of RAM, there we go. So three gigs of RAM, you saw how many applications I have open at the moment. Um, these are all the, systems and applications that are open at the moment 1.3 gigabytes used with still 1.1 gigabytes free moving on to all um so there you go that's what the application manager looks like pretty pretty mundane and uh let's go ahead and move on to battery um so far 22 hours two minutes i'm at 79 percent though i really haven't been using the device a whole lot lately i mean screen on time you're gonna see 53 minutes so nothing so i mean i'm not claiming that i've been using the crap out of the battery and it's just amazing or anything like that though 3200 milliamp hour battery is nothing to turn your nose up at of course we do have power saving modes and different storage um statistics in here for you uh, this is the 32 gigabyte edition uh, here in Canada. I think in North America, uh, it starts at 32 and they might end up coming out with a 64 gigabyte edition. Um, I asked uh, the gentleman from Samsung. He wasn't able to comment on exactly when we're going to see that. Uh, security, different security options in here. Quite standard a lot, uh, across a lot of different Android devices. And moving into about device here, of course, we've got Android 4.3. And there's no software updates for me at the moment. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's all of the settings um, I can show you on uh, in the settings menu for the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. Um, this is a long video, and that's because there's a lot of settings. Welcome to Samsung Galaxy devices, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and this kind of gave you a better idea of what the device is capable of doing and the different customization options uh, that it has versus other devices. Um, the Galaxy Note 3 is actually a really specific device compared to, say, for instance, the S4 because of that S Pen uh, right there, and there are a lot of other functionalities you can do, and I do kind of plan, I think I plan on doing a video specifically on some of the S Pen features, not all of them because there's almost too many, um, but some of the ones that I think are useful and cool uh, in the near future. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, click that likes button down below. It really goes a long way, and I always appreciate it. Uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe for more videos in the future like this one. We've got, you know, well, I've got a lot of videos planned for this bad boy, uh, ROMs and mods and how to root, most importantly. Um, and if you want to stay up to date on all things me, uh, you can always follow me on Twitter and Google+. Plus. Those links are actually in the description below. Uh, click on them. It's good for you. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching as always, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.